Hello people of YouTube. This is a video that I've been meaning to do for quite some time. You know, obviously being a train and level crossing fan, of course I have my own little collection of level crossing bells. I've collected these over the past couple of years and I thought now that I've reached 500 subscribers on YouTube, thanks everyone for subscribing, I thought as a special treat I'd show you off all the bells that I've got. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each bell one at a time. I will explain where I got the bell and any history of the bell that I know and then of course I will give a demonstration. I power my level crossing bells with these. These are DC power supplies. One's bigger than the other, but don't worry about that, they both do exactly the same thing. The most important thing about these is they have adjustable voltage. Basically that means, like I said, you can adjust the voltage. So right now it's at 13.8, I can adjust it down to 8, 12. Now level crossing bells usually run at about 12 volts, so I like to keep it around that range. And this one, just to show you, does the same, except this one's got a manual uh, adjuster just here rather than a digital one. And then to connect them to the bells, I use these. They're just standard crocodile clips with a four millimeter banana plug that goes into the DC power supply. You can buy these at a place like JCAR or maybe even on eBay or Amazon. That's what I did. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the first bell is this one. This is a second generation Westinghouse hybrid bell. How do we know this? Easiest way to tell is it's got two bolts on the back. A first generation hybrid bell has four bolts on the back, one of which I'll get to in a second. I originally got this bell from eBay in 2016 from the VR workshops when they operated out of the old Albert Park railway station. They have since moved to Seymour. When I first got it, it was incredibly rusty as you can see. I have since repainted it, but I actually regret doing that because the original rusty look of it gave it more of an original feel. One thing you'll notice is that this bell has the code A727 etched on the gong. I'll get back to that in a second. As for the history of the bell, I unfortunately don't know which crossing this came from. So we can see that this bell was tested in August 2013, so it must have been removed from some crossing around that point in time. Now you know how I mentioned the code A727 on the gong? Well, let's have a look at the Clayton Road level crossing in Clayton. The bell on the southern side has the same code. It also sounds the same, with a similar couple of quick gongs before getting into routine. Now I know what you're thinking, but no, these aren't the same bells. I got my bell in 2016, while the Clayton Road bell was still on the crossing until its removal in April 2018. But they are twins and were probably manufactured at the same time. And my one may have been installed on another crossing nearby, but we just don't know. As for the bell on Clayton Road, well, it was removed when the crossing was removed, and its current whereabouts nowadays are a mystery. 
The second bell is this one. This is a Western Cullen Hayes mechanical bell. This one I also got from eBay from a workshop in Melbourne. Apparently it came from New South Wales as part of an upgrade of a crossing from mechanical bells to e-bells, but aside from that I don't know any more history of the bell. The instructions have unfortunately been ripped out, but you can still read where you need to attach the positive and negative clips, so that's handy. The third bell is this one. This is a first generation Westinghouse hybrid bell. You can tell on this one by the four bolts on the back. And if that doesn't make it rare enough, it's also painted black. I got this one from the VR workshops in 2017, but unlike the first bell, I didn't buy it off eBay, I bought it in person. You can see by the paint scratchings on the casing that it must have once been silver, like my first bell, but was crudely painted afterwards. It's a little bit worse for wear on the inside too. The pulse control relay unit has damaged casing after someone must have tried to open it, which you literally cannot do, and the wires don't exactly go where they were designed to go, but it still works fine. Now, while I don't know for sure where this bell came from, I do speculate that it might have come from a level crossing on the now closed South Gippsland Railway. So, there was a crossing on this line at Currumburra Beena Road in Beena. This crossing used to have a black Westinghouse hybrid bell, which was later replaced with a General Signals e-bell.
If you compare the footage of the bell at the crossing in 2010 with my bell, they sound similar. We can't know for sure, but take what you will from it. And no, I don't know why it has the word sticky painted on the gong. The fourth bell is this one. This is a Mackenzie Holland teardrop bell. This is a later aluminium model. How can we tell? Well, the earlier cast iron models have bolts on the front of the bell. This one has a bolt on the back. Now, what's the history of this bell? Well, I got it in 2017 on eBay from Point Cook. It was apparently sitting in a farm shed for many years. How it ended up on a farm, I have no idea. And unfortunately, that's all I know. Regardless of this, it is a beautiful bell. The original wires to the terminals in the bell were cut right at the end, so connecting my clips to them can be kind of tricky. Best way I can do it, something like that, maybe. The fifth bell is this one. This is another Mackenzie & Holland teardrop bell, and it's also another later aluminium model.
Now, this bell is a very special bell. You may not be able to tell immediately, but if you look carefully, there is an outline of a yellow X painted on the back. Someone has done a good job of trying to remove it. Hmm, where do I recognize that yellow X from? Why don't we have a look at the old Corrigan Road level crossing in Noble Park? This crossing was removed in February 2018, but I got lots of footage of it in the years prior to its removal. Let's go back to some footage of the crossing in October 2016. For those who don't know, this was an unusual crossing. It had two normal bells installed, but it also had a third bell for some reason. Let's have a closer look at this third bell. It's a Mackenzie and Holland teardrop bell. The bell wasn't connected up to the crossing, so it wouldn't activate when the crossing would activate. It was literally just a static display, but may have been connected before the crossing had boom gates. At the time the crossing was removed, it was technically the last crossing on the Melbourne Metro network to have a Mackenzie and Holland teardrop bell, after the one at Marshall Street in Ivanhoe was removed in 2017. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy, but this bell clearly doesn't have a yellow X painted on the back. Well, let's go to January 2017 then. Yep, it does now. Know what that means? This bell is the original teardrop bell from Corrigan Road. After the crossing was removed, the teardrop bell found its way to the VR workshops, where I bought it off eBay in May 2018. Another thing to realise is that Corrigan Road was upgraded to e-bells by July 2017. But the teardrop bell remained on the crossing, although it was rotated to face south instead of west. I'm assuming that the e-bells on the crossing were taken by Metro for spare parts, while the teardrop bell, being an obsolete bell, was given away due to it not being needed anymore. This is probably why there was a yellow X painted on the back. And despite being static on Corrigan Road for god knows how many years, it still works fine. It even still has instructions. Good luck trying to read them though. The wires to the terminals on this bell were cut at a decent length, so it's easier to connect the clips to.
The sixth and final bell is this one. This is a safe tran mechanical bell. I got this one off eBay in 2019. I bought it from all the way in America and had it shipped out over here. Don't even bother asking me how much the delivery cost. Unfortunately, because it's from America, I don't know any history of this bell. The main reason why I got it was because safe train bells were relatively common here in Australia, with many here in Victoria still in operation until recently, the most recent being the ones installed at the Caribbean markets. Though there is still one active at Seymour, to my knowledge. Don't quote me on it though. So I thought it'd be a nice touch to add another bell to my collection that was often used here in Australia. It's always good when the bells come with instructions. So that's all my bells. Here's what some of them sound like together.
And just to show you, with my DC power supplies, the higher the voltage, the faster the bells will ring. The lower the voltage, the slower the bells will ring. And that's it. I don't intend on getting any more bells at this stage because they take up a lot of room, they're heavy as anything, and they're really noisy. But they're a fun little piece of railway memorabilia to have. For all those 509 of you out there that have subscribed, you are legends. I really enjoy making level crossing videos. It's something I'm passionate about. So knowing that you guys like my videos and watch them too, it means a lot to me. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.